opening the door of your heart. Several centuries ago, seven monks were in a cave in a jungle somewhere in Asia, meditating on the Thai for us unconditional love. I despise. In the reverse story, there's were the head monk, his brother, and his best friend. The fourth was the head monk enemy. They just could not get along. The fish monk in the group were a very old monk, so a fast in years that his words and said to die at any time. The sixth monk was sick, so it in fact that he too could die at any time. And the last monk, the seventh, was the useless monk. He always more when he was supposed to his meditating. He couldn't remember his chanting, and if he did, he would turn off key. He couldn't even keep his thoughts in robustly. But the others tolerated him and thanked him for teaching them vision. One day again, us bandits discovered the cave. It was so remote, so well hidden. That they want to taste its offer as their hour pass, so they decide to kill all the monks. The head monk, fortunately, was a very bashful speaker. He meant as long at me how to resist the gangs of bandits to let all the monks go, except one who would be killed as a warning to the other monk not to let anyone know the location of the cave. That's what the best the head monk could do. The head monk were left alone for a few minutes to make the awful decision of who should be sacrificed so that the others could go free. When I tell this story in public, I was here to ask my audience, "Well, who do you think the head monk chose?" It stops some of my audience from going to sleep through during my talk, and it wakes up the others who are already asleep. I remind them that there was the head monk, the brother, the best friend, the enemy, the old monk, and the sick monk, both close the dead, and the useless monk. Who do you think he shoots? Some dancers guess the enemy. No, I say, his brother. Wrong. The useless monk's own way gets a mentions how unterrorful we are. Once I have had my bit of fun, I reverse the answer. The head monk were unable to choose. His love for his brother were exactly the same, no more and no less. Then his love for his best friend, which was exactly the same as his love for his enemy, for the old monk, the sick monk, and even for the year-old useless monk, he has perfected the meaning of those words. The door of my heart will always be open to you, whatever you do, whoever you are. The door of the head monk's heart were wide open to all, with unconditional, non-discriminating, free-flowing love. 
and most poignantly, his love for others were a war to his love for himself. The door of his heart were open to himself as well. That's why he couldn't choose between himself and others. I remind the children recent in my audience that their book say to love their neighbor and does so. Not more than yourself and not less than yourself, but equal to yourself. It means to regard others as one good regards oneself, and oneself as one regards others. Why is this last most in my audience thought that the head monk would choose himself to die? Why is this in our cultures? That we are always sacrificing ourselves for others and this is how to be good. Why is it that we are more demanding ridicule and banishing of ourselves than of anyone else? It is for one and the same reason. We have not yet learned how to love ourselves. If you don't find it difficult to say to another, the door of your heart is open to you, whatever you do. Then that's difficultly in trifling compared with the difficulty you will face in saying to yourself, Me, the one I've been so close to for as long as I can remember myself. The door of my heart is open to me as well. Once of me, no matter what I have done, coming. That's what I mean by loving ourselves. It's called forgiveness. It's a stepping free from the reason of guilt. It's, it's being as peer with oneself as if you do find the courage to say the words to yourself honestly and the reverse of your inner world, then you will rise up, not down, to miss sublime love. Once day, we all have to say to ourselves the words or one similar with honesty, not playing games. When we do, it is as if a part of ourselves that have been rejected, living outside in the curse for so long, has now come home. We feel unified, whole and free to be happy. Only when we love ourselves in such a way can we know what it means to really love another, no more and no less. And please remember, you do not have to be perfect with our fault to give yourself such love. If you wait for perfection, it never arrives. We must open the door of your heart to ourselves whatever we have done. Once inside, then we are perfect. People often ask me what happened to those seven monks when the head monk told the bandits that he was unable to choose. The story, as I heard, is many years ago, didn't say it stopped when where I have finished. But I know what happened next. I figured all that must have ensured. When the head monk explained to the bandits why he couldn't choose between himself and another, and that's right. 
the meanings of love and forgiveness as I have just done for you. That's all the bandits were so embraced and inspired. That's not only this they let the monks lie, but they came the monks themselves. <laughs>